My dear friends, I once again welcome you to Mass today as we gather to celebrate the Mass of the 26th Sunday in ordinary time of the year. And for those who already know, today, September 29, we also remember the feast of the archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, celebrated every September 29th, the archangels. And we pray that these archangels will also pray for us. For those who have been paying attention in the Gospels, especially in the last two Sundays, you would have noticed that Jesus has been insistent on letting his followers or his apostles understand the true meaning of discipleship, what it means to be his follower. Beginning with two Sundays ago when he talked about his going to Jerusalem to die and to be handed over to the chief priests and the reaction of Peter. I'm sure we still remember that. And when Peter said, this will not happen to you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He wanted his immediate apostles to have a better understanding of the meaning of his role as a Messiah. A Messiah who dies that he may save other people. Not a Messiah that has come to be served. Last Sunday, he also made another prediction about his death. And one more time, his immediate apostles missed the point. They were arguing about who was the greatest. And he took the time, one more time, to correct that understanding about greatness and service. And I did say last Sunday that if you want to be great, learn to serve. Greatness lies in service. Today, Jesus again, and in fact, the whole of the readings, invite us to also pay attention to this dimension that may become an obstacle in our following of Jesus. And what is it? The spirit of intolerance. Whoever does not agree with you, or whoever does not fit into the same page with you, should be dealt with, or should be set aside. Intolerance. We see that in the first reading, and we see that in the gospel. And to help his disciples, to avoid this wrong understanding of discipleship, he proposed something in the gospel of today. If your hand causes you to sin or causes you to miss the point, emphasis is mine here, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. And if your eyes causes you to sin or to miss the mark or to miss the point, block it out. Jesus' radical solution to making corrections in the journey of discipleship. Whatever it is, that is in the life of his disciples or his followers that will become obstacle 
in following Jesus in sincerity of heart and mind. Deal with it. Confront it. Remove it. Take it out. And this is where, till today, the greatest challenge lies before every Christian. The greatest challenge in the sense of not being open and willing to confront that thing that has remained an obstacle in our lives. This is the greatest challenge from Jesus today. Many shy away from it. Many don't even want to talk about it. Many don't want to face it. But it is still there in us. Jesus is inviting you and inviting me to face it squarely and deal with it. Over the years in the history of Christianity and the history of the church, the spiritual masters have often proposed ways to make these corrections. And I want to remind you of those. Spiritual experts, spiritual masters in our church tradition and in the Christian tradition talk about what we call custody of the senses. Custody of the senses. What does that mean? What we see, what we hear, what we taste, or what we eat, and what we touch, or even what we perceive. Spiritual masters say, the teachers, if you want to make progress in your spiritual life, if you want to make progress in following Jesus as a true disciple, then you will begin to learn the custody of the senses. What do you feed your eyes with? What do you listen to? What do you touch? What do you eat? These are the things that will end up becoming moments that will distract an individual from true discipleship. That's on one level. On a deeper level, spiritual masters also talk about what we call avoiding occasions of sin. Put in a summary form, this is what Jesus is saying here. If your hand will cause you to sin, cut it off. Avoid that occasion that will put you into sin. If your eyes will cause you to sin, pluck it out. Avoid that thing that you see that will lead you into sin. Avoiding occasions of sin. But for many of us, we prefer to be in our comfort zone, what we're used to. Whatever has become part of us, we'll find it difficult to separate ourselves from those. But today, Jesus is asking us to revisit those obstacles in our spiritual life. Those things that cause or create obstacle in true discipleship. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. Perhaps in today's liturgy, we're going to begin by confronting the spirit of intolerance. Whoever does not agree with us, whoever is not on the same page with us, perhaps today we may begin from there. As we read in the first reading of today and in the gospel, we may begin from there. And from intolerance, according to today's readings, we may also address the spirit that guides us in the use of money, which the second reading of today captured very well. And for those who paid attention last Sunday, I talked about the substitutes, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, that create an obstacle in our spiritual journey. Wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. The readings of today invite us to begin to address these areas. And I want to put it this way. What the liturgy of today wants us to do 
is what I call maximizing our strength and minimizing our weaknesses. That's the message of the gospel of today. Maximizing our strength and minimizing our weaknesses. We all have got our strengths. What we do best, what we're very good at doing, those are our strengths. When Jesus talks about cutting off one part of the body or the other, what is he saying? Pay attention to the things that make you weak and work on them. Meaning, minimize them. And then those areas that are your strength, maximize them. And that's the principle in Christian life. Both for me, for you, for every child of God. Maximizing our strength and minimizing our weaknesses. That's my message this Sunday. And I bring all of us to the altar of the Lord. Asking him to give us this grace of being conscious of what we need to maximize in our lives, especially in the area of our strength, and then what we need to minimize in the area of our weaknesses in life. And that's how to become true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this message find a home in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen.